Hello everybody, it's Doug here. In this video, I'm going to show you some rework on one of several oak fretboards I've been making for replacement necks for two Brian May Red Special replicas, one being my own. I'll cover the assembly, fretting and finishing of my new guitar neck in depth in future videos, but for now I'll show you the drilling out and replacement of some unsatisfactory mother of pearl fret position markers. This particular fretboard had two issues, one of which was one of the seventh fret position marker holes was drilled too deep. I cut three others from the same timber, so this one sat in my scrap wood pile for several months. Being quarter sawn, tightly grained and high density, this oak stock cuts, drills and sands very cleanly and is too good to discard. So I decided to challenge myself to repair it and ultimately fit it to a mahogany neck which has itself some issues, but which is similarly too good to languish on my scrap timber pile. To get to this stage, I repaired the over-drilled hole with an oak disc, glued in mother of pearl dots, then final radius the fretboard using a Stumac radiusing beam and 320 grit abrasive paper. The additional unplanned sanding caused some of the dots to become so thin they're transparent. You can't see this when viewing them at an oblique angle, but it's very obvious when viewed from directly above. My YouTube videos cover a wide range of topics related to Brian May's musical equipment, and further information on all my projects is available on my website, dsgb.net. Please support my work by liking, commenting and subscribing here on YouTube, and follow me on social media platforms including Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Before I get into the work itself, I'll introduce you to the method by which I plan to assemble my new Red Special neck, which is unorthodox because I exploit CNC as much as possible to make both the mahogany part and the oak fretboard. The loose neck that I'm trying to recover to a usable standard is based on my second design iteration, and it's got pickup rebates which are too deep, and a straight-sided volute region. The main section width hasn't quite cut as per design for some reason, but otherwise this is good quality, linear-grained, genuine mahogany, and it's free of unsightly figuring and is again too good to discard. For the third design iteration, I modified the volute region and made the pickup rebates shallower. To prevent any undercutting of the sides of the main section on which the fretboard is mounted, I added 1mm thick strips to each side. Now I should have had the foresight to do this from the outset when I cut my first neck in June 2017, because they hold the cut object rigid in the surrounding frame and will allow the fretboard to be clamped during gluing without a support call on the underside. Other advantages are that the glue will not overspill, and when I remove it I can leave additional mahogany proud of the join to trim and a braid flush. To ensure that the fretboard is mounted precisely and will not move during clamping and gluing, I CNC cut this acrylic jig with six mounting holes, which match holes in equivalent positions in the accurately planed all round mahogany stock. The jig is mounted using 6mm stainless steel dowel pins. To execute this work accurately, I will need to mount the fretboard back on the CNC machine bed so that it is exactly aligned parallel with the y-axis. The acrylic alignment template that I've just shown you will be ideal for this. I'll use double-sided adhesive tape sparingly to hold down the acrylic template and the fretboard itself. The next challenge is to accurately locate the X and Y center so I can rerun the marker dot routing toolpath as if I was executing it for the first time. The center of the fretboard is just under 5mm forward of the ninth fret marker dot. I have centered the router by eye using a 0.6mm diameter cutter to the pencil centerline cross I marked on the surface of the dot, also by eye. Then I'll drive the machine forward to the fretboard y-axis center and re-zero. With the X and Y zero points located, I next find the Z zero using a cigarette paper. I considered drilling out the unsatisfactory dots in two stages, firstly using a regular twist drill, then the solid carbide two flute end mill. In the end I decided to avoid a cutter change and just go with the 6mm two flute end mill because it is rotating slightly to route a circular hole a fraction bigger than a quarter of an inch. And this should be sufficient to avoid spoil being compacted at the tip. To reduce the likelihood of the mother of pearl discs not fitting first time due to the holes being the wrong diameter, I didn't make any assumptions and checked the tolerance on the supplier's stated dimensions of 6mm and a quarter inch, 6.35mm. 
Although I'm gluing the discs in place rather than relying purely on an interference fit, obviously a smaller hole would be preferable because I can always tweak the G-code in the CNC toolpath and rerun the cut. I could fill a larger diameter hole with superglue, but I want to avoid this outcome in case it's obvious on the finished fretboard. Let's go then and see how it turns out. With that critical phase completed successfully, I can now move on to gluing the new marker dots in place. I'll do this using cyanoacrylate superglue, and then hammer them into position with a nylon rod to minimise the risk of cracking the brittle mother of pearl. I slide a section of plastic shim underneath the acrylic template to loosen the double-sided adhesive tape, then lift the template off the machine bed. Finally, I'll remove the fretboard using the same method by sliding the section of plastic shim material underneath to loosen the tape. Inspecting the fretboard at this stage, I'm a bit concerned that some of the marker dots still haven't inserted sufficiently. But I'll take my chances, and if the end result is again unacceptable, I'll make a judgement whether to repeat the process or just move on. The final job then is to file the marker dots flush with the radiused fretboard surface. I'll use a small flat bladed diamond coated file for this job, pausing frequently to clean the file and the fretboard of dust buildup. Occasionally I wipe down the fretboard with isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth. I also tried vacuuming compacted dust out of the wood grain with limited success. As you watch me filing away, I realise that it looks messy to wipe the file on the sleeve of my lab coat rather than a cloth, but in doing so I realise that there is an advantage to this. The white textile and white mother of pearl dust makes it obvious if I start to encroach on the surrounding oak because of the contrast with the buff coloured wood. Just a quick word about using liquids to clean bare wood. Never allow water to contact an untreated wood surface. I recall from my days of studying chemistry at university that water has very strong hydrogen bonds and a large surface tension, which is approximately three times that of isopropyl alcohol and acetone. It is this surface tension which forces wood grain apart. Fast forwarding to the end of the repetitive filing, cleaning and checking, I'm satisfied that the repair work has been successful and that this fretboard is good enough to be mounted to a neck. I've managed to avoid filing any flat spots at the marker positions, which would require another round of shaping with the radiusing beam, removing still more material. Well that's all, so thanks very much for watching folks. Join me again next time for more exploits in amateur luthiery with a Brian May bias. <laughs>